people are just go like when they hear you say it, they just assume, which isn't the case, that that's also what you mean. You're just smart enough not to say. No, I'm it. dumb enough to not right. to not uh, to not figure out a better way to say. Right. It. You know, but I'm saying the dumbest racist in the room. Yeah, I'm, it's yeah, <laughs> dumb. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he wasn't playing that well. Nah, it but was... no, but that was the thing. Like I did the first show and then Tom came and did the second show and both shows the next night. And I was like, cause I didn't have any time to get nervous because it was literally like an hour before the show. Yeah. Because he got the call last minute and then called me last minute. And so I got there and as soon as I started to get a little bit nervous, I called him and I was like, dude, I'm about to go on stage in front of Dave Chappelle. And he was like, Chappelle's not going to watch your set, dummy. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, yeah. And I forgot about the fact that there were 800 people in the crowd because that never really bothered me that much anyways. Yeah. And so I just sort of walked like I went out and did my set being like, I can just be loose. And I ended up having a really good set. Yeah. Um, partially because and, and then as soon as I came off, the Chappelle was like, that was fucking great. And I was like, oh, OK. You did so, watch it. Yeah, so. that's cool. Yeah, and then I think I did the second show, and then I went there, and yeah. I, I thought it was going to be an all-black crowd. I couldn't see the crowd, yeah. so I just slipped into doing my old Uptown set. Yeah, and then but, it's weird because I had, I had chunks of material that were similar to the chunks that Chappelle was doing, not so much uh, yeah. but so, like subject matter wise, and so it was like I, and I didn't really do that well, to be honest. Mm. It was well, just went the other did, way. The, one of the best sets I've like. The two best sets I have ever seen you have. One was at that little Fort Mill Comedy Zone room. And the other one was because we did Greensboro. And then we both went and did the D-Pack, too, where we split the shows at the D-Pack. Where they, because you weren't even planning on doing the D-Pack shows. They yeah. invited, he invited both of us to come do the D-Pack shows. And at the D-Pack, um, it was, one of them was opening for Chappelle. One of them was at the Fort Mill Comedy Zone. And the other one was uh, that John Oliver night when oh, he yeah. was late. And you went out and did an hour in front of John Oliver's crowd. And honestly, the set you had that night, I, I will put up there against any comic ever in the history of comedy. You destroyed that night. This and they and, and you had didn't know you were going to do an hour. He thought he was going to just open for John. Yeah, Oliver. I was yeah. going to do like fifteen minutes, and I got there, and their plane wasn't there, so they were like they delayed it. James and I are hanging out backstage, mm -hmm. and I, they delayed the show like forty minutes, and then they were like, "He's still." They just landed, and the he had a, his feature was with him, so they mm -hmm. were like, "Just go up, and then we'll let you know when he gets here." Yeah, and then I went, but, went up, and it was just like it just kept going and but going. Yeah, I mean, it was That's two thousand cool. people at the deep and just yeah, destroyed though. It that was, I mean, that really was. I will, in terms, especially in terms of like a big theater show and the the different vibe and energy that that is. I will put that setup you did that night against anything. And the thing you know how crazy. disappointing that is to hear right now because they had a video. They were videoing, and they had it. They also had me up on uh, on the yeah. in the big venues. They have it on the screen. Yeah. So they basically recorded a, well, my best been, set ever in front of a huge crowd, and they ne they didn't like yeah. hit record or whatever. Oh, like, oh, that's right. Or they didn't get me the tape. Something happened. I, I should like, have been there, man. This could be a special. Yeah, I mean, oh, it was so frustrating. Like, <laughs> I and would it's never funny because, like, the best like small crowd set, one of the best small crowd sets I've ever seen somebody have was at Four Mill Comedy Zone. I was middling for you, and we we uh, we'd done we'd gone and done the Georgia Zone rooms and like that Florida Zone room, and oh, then we yeah. came over to, and like, like you crushed that. And I think part of it was no, I, no, because I had middled for you on the Georgia and the Florida show, but they already had somebody for Charlotte, for Fort Mill, the Fort Mill Comedy Zone. So it was the highest gases lady. Oh yeah. And yeah. you were so loose going up because you and I were in the back giggling about her highest gases jokes. So much to the point that you weren't sitting there in your notebook and getting tense getting or any ready, of that kind yeah. of stuff. You were just super relaxed. And you just walked on stage after her, like um, like still giggling as you were going up about her highest gases stuff. And then went on and just crushed it. I think that's a kind of a key is going up. Yeah. Like, already in a great mood like already sort of yeah. laughing and feeling good about yourself and then yeah i don't remember that set but um that's cool that's pretty wide range right there in front of yeah 2, or, yeah that's or, what or i'm saying like that's that's why every time <laughs> i like, bring you on, on yourself as a comic i'm, I'm like <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't know why it does that. That's why we're going to recreate the best set you ever had you just do it right now i invited tons of friends they're yes. going to come in we're going to laugh 
Yeah, I don't. Right, I clicked wait, record. We, we didn't. We haven't started. We may have already started. Oh, okay. Well, that's cool. we, yeah, yeah, all those compliments. Yeah, so yeah. You I wouldn't have said those. You think we're gonna think we're gonna take those out? Come on. <laughs> if not, so we could. If not started, we're gonna repeat that. I need to. We yeah. need some. We need some video evidence. So, so James and I have known each other a long time, and that you know what's funny about that Chappelle thing, right? Because that was back. That was like when he was first start. He had, didn't have any of his Netflix specials yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had just. He was just kind of. I don't know if he was just starting back, but he was... He was about a year back. Yeah, he was about a year back, and he was getting ready to start recording. And that special was not quite ready yet, probably. Yeah. We were, we were, and then you started working with him regularly, right? And we did a few of those shows. We did the Charlotte ones and yeah, stuff yeah. like that together. We were almost like splitting them, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then... Uh, so that was how many years ago? Ten years ago or so? Seven or eight. It was eight. Long, it was about long. eight eight years ago. Because okay. yeah, the, like the, my Facebook just told me the anniversary. So. Uh huh. Because the, the picture that you still have up of working with him. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would never delete that yeah, picture. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't. I wouldn't either. I didn't get a picture with him. Because uh, James is like James is good, really good at um, at talking to people and and sort of being comfortable talking to people. Like walking into a room, like he, like in the in the Greensboro room, it was like he had his own like room, and they'd set it up with weird lighting, and you know, yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah. And James is fine with just walking in there, and I'm like, he, and even James was like, well, go meet him, and I'm like, ah, this is yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like, why yeah. are you? And well, then, no, and then, but anyway, I he was working uh, my buddy Gary Abdo, who owns a club in Atlanta, the Com Atlanta Comedy Theater, or whatever. Yeah. And Chappelle does there like regularly to go work on material, and. Um, I went and watched him do like four shows over over the course of a week to uh, um, right after the Will Smith thing, right? So yeah. he's, he's working on this new show. It was good. But Gary brought me back to meet him. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll meet him. I mean, and <laughs> and uh, so I go back and he's like, hey, and I'm he introdu Gary introduces me to him. And Chappelle's like, hey, man, we've met before, haven't we? I'm like, yeah, but there's no way you remember like that back then. Like it was like back when you were first starting and going through. He was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember like, and that's just amazing to me that he would, that he, that brief of a thing that he's like, oh, we work together somewhere. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. But he likes comics. Yeah, but you know, I mean, I do too. But I, there's people that walk in and sit down there that they bring in and I'm like, hey man, I'm Tom. And they're like, yeah, we've met three times, dude. Huh. Like, and I'm like, oh. well, yeah. yeah He's yeah. also probably worked with so many people. He would never be wrong if he said, hey. But he we didn't, I mean, yeah. I mean, he didn't remember your name. No, 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 no. Yeah, so, I mean. Yeah, but even to remember, yeah, that, that's, he's just a uh, a smart guy that has a, has a good memory, you know what I mean? That's true. I mean, yeah, you did, I mean, but you did. Like seven shows opening for I him. I guess that's true. Yeah, Most I mean, I talked to him a little bit backstage about yeah. his show, and my, but not much, you know. Anyway. You didn't get a nickname. Anyway, I was just surprised. Do you have? A, did he give you a nickname? No. Okay. What well, does he give people? Nicknames? Oh, I don't know. I just, <laughs> I guess maybe I subconsciously really want Dave Chappelle to give me a nickname. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, if so I ever met him. The, I, I'm amazed by, um, by. Uh, how many comics are turning on him right now and like especially like i i see a thing like you know they obviously the the trans thing that a lot of people are like ah he's a, you know make throwing him under the bus and then the whatever happened with elon musk now it's like comics that i respect are just like fuck dave Chappelle. And i'm like what is the matter with you what do you mean yeah but i think part of that comes from the fact that especially like open mic comics and comics that haven't spent a lot of time on the road, they haven't processed the idea that even comics I don't like, and even comics you don't like, we still like more than the people in the audience usually. Right. Like, you know, because it's a comic and we have things we can relate and like interact Unless with. Unless you're in that stage where you're like, you have that little envy thing of jealousy right. about but, him. So you, but, you think I'm better than that. I, even, why am I not getting that? Of, of course. But even, even in that situation, there's, there's a, there's a humanity between, if, if, a if, if we're at a party and there's a hundred people at that party and it, me and one other comic, me and that other comic are going to probably hang out most that night right and that's i'm sure you're in the same situation it's yes. and and but part of that is like the people you know so when somebody like Chappelle brings elon musk out 
He knows that guy. That guy's gotten, because he's a billionaire, he's been backstage probably at 20 of his shows. Right. They've developed some level of relationship in the same way that he saw you and was like, we, we've met, right? Like with Musk, like he's, they've met 20 times. They developed some level of relationship. So when that guy's at his show and all he's so big in the news, how would he not instinctually think, I have Elon Musk backstage. I should bring him out. And why would it even occur to him that the audience even factors into that? Because, you know, the audience is, especially when you do these massively huge shows, you know, there's no individual sitting in front of you. It's just a sea of people. Right. So it almost becomes no people. Like, that's why for me, it's easier to do shows in front of really, really big crowds than like eight to 10 people. Because when it's eight to 10 people, that's I real. want to talk to each person mm. and kind of make eye contact with everybody in the room because I don't want to be that awkward person that's not like, but you put 2,000 people in front of me and I'm literally just going out and it's about comedy and fun. Like, so I feel like in that situation, it makes perfect sense that he would bring out his buddy. Right. Like the fact that his buddy is the richest guy or right now second richest guy in the world wasn't the thought in his head. It was just like, it's Elon. Elon's, if it had been Michael Che, he would have brought him out. If it had been like somebody, I saw somebody posting about it. if it was Warren Buffett, he wouldn't have brought him out. Bullshit. I think he would have brought Warren Buffett out sooner. Just because he's got, he's got bedtime. Yeah, 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 because he's a million years old and needs a nap. Like, and would have just picked on him about that. And then so when he came out and his friend was getting booed, he got defensive for his friend. And everybody's reaction is he has such disrespect for his audience that he turned on the audience to defend Elon Musk. And they completely removed the human None of you factor. are my friend. This yeah. guy I know. Yeah, this guy I know. You guys maybe spent $300 on a ticket to see me, but I've never met you. I don't know you. I don't, you know. So to me, that's that's the only, like, it completely removes, to not understand that situation removes the humanity of Chappelle and Musk. And yeah, they're, they're avatars. They're these celebrity figures. And so the idea that they're humans doesn't process for a lot of people. It's like when you're a little kid and your teacher and you see your teacher and you then you see your teacher at the grocery store <laughs> and you're like, you exist outside of oh, school. Yes. And I think it's the same thing the way a lot of people perceive celebrities where they're almost fictional characters in our minds because they're so. But shouldn't Chappelle, what's the argument? What's their argument that he shouldn't have brought him? Like, should, well, the argument is Chappelle that Musk has, that, you like, know, might be a fascist who's going to try to destroy America okay. or the world. Really? It's. I mean, there is, it's so funny because I've been, for the last year, I've been doing bits about how evil Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos are because they're literally building rocket ships to escape the planet. Like, everybody's like, isn't it cool? We're going to explore space. Like, no, we, you're gonna be left we behind. aren't exploring shit. But We're going to be here dead as the I dinosaurs. I would be also because I like, especially I'm less so now, but like how freaked out I was about the world ending yeah. and blah, blah, blah. It's like, I'm thinking of like, all right, what can I do? Should I dig a fucking hole? Should I have should I have 80 gallons of water under my house? Should I should I be stockpiling shit? Should like like if I had the access to be like, well, I'm going to get a rocket and of go course, build a face up there because fuck these people. They're not paying right. attention. If I had that access, I might you do would that. Too. That doesn't but, make me evil. That just makes me scared. Right. But the the dif the difference is it's a sort of like my approach on it is as evil as the Walmart family is. At least if the world's fucked, they're fucked with us. Right. <laughs> like, like think about how evil like the Koch brothers. Like they, uh, these are these are like, you know, human equivalents of a Satan walking the planet. Really? <laughs> I mean, yeah, think about all the stuff they fucked up. Like it's crazy how evil these guys are. But again, if the planet explodes, they die with us. But fucking dudes like Musk and Bezos and you know, like they're not. And we're also, we're exploring space and isn't it amazing? It's like, no, we're fucked. Instead of taking their billions of dollars and investing in trying to save this planet. Yeah. And I, look, I get there's the, they grew up, and I've seen all the marketing and like they shot William Shatner into space. They shot fucking Captain Kirk into space and pretended like that wasn't a marketing thing. Right. Like it wasn't a way of drawing people in to support this. Everybody's so excited. It's like, oh, did you see that Captain Kirk actually went to space? It's like, yeah. So you'll be on board with them 
fucking leaving us all behind. I, I'm just playing devil's advocate because I haven't really looked into it. Yeah. But shouldn't they? Shouldn't pe- we people be doing that and not just the government? Because like, like you can even say like, um, <laughs> yes. you can even say like, what but was his also. name? Uh, Hawking. He was like, we need to, explore, <laughs> we, need to we need to explore other. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get up. We need to, we can't be exploring it's, space. Fun, it's funny. I got a guy who I've argued with for years about things, and he's ultra like conservative. And I'm yeah. like, the planet, we're, we need to do something about it. And like, even Stephen Hawkins said it. And he was like, yeah, we don't really know that was him typing. You know what I mean? Like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like <laughs> Helen Keller. Did she really write that beautiful poetry <laughs> anyway. when she was deaf, dumb, and blind? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he, the, the, like, the, the, the major scientists say we need to. We need to get yes. to other planets and get and, and expand humanity because this planet isn't going to be here regardless. Right. So somebody needs to be doing no, that. No, you're, you're, I'm not, it's, look, the argument that I ma- that I just made is in itself already the devil's advocate argument to the broad consensus that of course we should be exploring space. And I don't disagree. We should be trying to eventually colonize Mars. We should eventually try to, my point is when it's specifically these billionaires, like somebody that's got the 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 two of, it's not two of NASA. the three richest men on earth, they they know something. It's yeah, more of a private thing, like yeah, private yeah, 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 yeah. Doing it. yeah, like they're like they're every time you order toilet paper off Amazon, you're funding Jeff Bezos's escape. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. When you buy a Tesla, cool, you got an electric car, but nobody gave a fuck about that. But the second, like, that's the second Musk bought Twitter, and he could like block a fucking reporter from the Washington Post. No, he's the evilest. Like, he's literally a supervillain plotting his rocket ship escape, and that was fine. Preparation but, H. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's doc- He's literally Dr. Evil. Nobody cares. But as soon as he's fucking with Twitter, <laughs> like, yeah. oh, go fuck yourself. Like, you, I'm not on Twitter because I, years ago I got yeah. off, but what has it changed for you at all? Is it different? Is it a different thing? I mean, no, look, I... <sighs> I am torn when it comes to this kind of stuff because I fully recognize that what the First Amendment represents is that the government can't step in and arrest you for something. Congress you shall pass but no they law. Don't, but the Congress, government right. can't make me allow free speech on my show. Right. But that's and that's the thing. Twitter is a privately owned company. Like it's not a government entity. So if they want, so I've always said this: when somebody gets, when it, whether dude, it's happened to me when Facebook demonetized me because I made, I said the word white trash. I call, I'm white, and I you posted white trash, and they demonetized my videos. Like I, can we bleep that? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> honestly, like you probably should. I'll just w h i t e t r a s h. What about white garbage? Can we say white garbage? Refuse, yes. white refuse. Yes, white refuse. British. You so can you can what... use other words. Right. Yeah, it's the same rubbish. It's like the word Karen is just a way to say cunt. Yeah. Like that's all Karen is is just oh she's being a cunt, but you can't say cunt anymore, so it she's being a Karen. I mean, it's even the same. It's that's literally the only purpose of that uh, word. It is. I wonder. Why, I wonder why they pick Karen, by the way. Because it sounds it's like a, cunt. Oh, it's okay. Like it's k k. Like it's. I thought it was just because it's a basic like white woman name. Like, In addition, yeah. I that, never thought about that either, but that makes it is a sense. very basic yeah. white woman name, um, and it sounds like cunt. <laughs> like it's, yes. it's, it's, it's one does not negate the other, but. Wouldn't it be? Would it be pretty? It would kind of be cool if that was like. That was like your little, like your little groups thing. Like it, that's what you started calling somebody, and then, then next thing you know, it's that's the that's the vernacular for all of society. You mean like black people were using the word Karen, and then white much, people took it over? Yeah, pretty much every every word. The word woke, and then like some white person was at a party and went, "What'd you say, woke? I want to be woke." Yeah. <laughs> like it's and, then, and now fucking white people say that's it. like half the words we use now, yeah, yeah. pretty much. I'll come from come from uh, come from black culture. Black, yeah. black culture. Or there's a lot of drag culture, like a lot of black drag culture, like that. A hmm. lot of that comes from that. Like, oh, you got drag snatch the wig, or I'm not even saying it right, but a lot of that. No, comes really, from that not at all. Yeah, but that's okay because yeah. you're not supposed. Yeah, to. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, it'd be weird if. Why I, don't you have weird, lighting, but, by the way? Like you're in the dark. Huh? Is there a camera on you? Oh, I got I got a a little glow right oh, okay. here. Okay, I'm, I'm not I'm not on cam very much usually, so I don't really light myself. Okay. Well, you should light yourself because you're Which a handsome man. Is this Thanks. camera on you? I have been in such a flip everything around into a negative state mindset lately that like every that's part of why it's so much of like the like I got into it last night. My wife and I not arguing. We were just talking about 
sort of modern like culture. And I was talking about the, the reason why we're having a lot of problems culturally is society has completely like for the good recognize the issues that we have in this country with racism and discrimination and bigotry. The thing that what about sexism and sexism, like the country is, is recognizing these things. What they're not recognizing is this massive cultural shift that has happened since the advent of social media. Uh, I was actually reading up on this. This is a crazy stat, but it's totally true. And you can verify this um, in 2008, 53% of adult men in America who were of the legal, like the uh, age to be have, be sexually active were sexually active. Now in 2022, it's barely 20%. Oh, I saw that. What? Yeah. But it's because on apps like Tinder and other dating apps where it's swipe, apparently um, oh, yes. women, women rate the top 20% of men in attractiveness as average. So any man under that top 20%. And women aren't having less sex. It's slightly smaller, like the number's slightly lower for women. They're just all having sex with the same dudes. Yeah, but it's just the same the same group of like guys that get swiped the right way on, like but, like that are just racking it up. While and the cult to take a culture where we had seventy percent of men were married to evolve to only fifty percent in by oh eight were having sex, and now in the last you know fourteen this crazy shift where literally like one only one in five guys is sexually active which means they're not in relationships which means or if they are they're sexless relationships that are involving their partner going out and you know like it's this is a massive cultural shift in the way that the, our entire society functions and exists so it's and making- like it makes sense why you're seeing guys being no, this is not defending the radicalization of fucking idiots. That I'm not incels. defending it <laughs> in the incels. I'm not saying what, what is happening to them or what they're doing is good. I'm saying the question of where is it coming from and mm. how is this happening is so readily apparent that this weird the, the algorithms are pumping right wing propaganda into all of these incredibly unfulfilled guys yeah so they're and super these guys, frustrated yeah, and they yeah they blame yeah they blame women for not having they, so, they blame they blame like women. women if it's a white guy they're blaming black people if it's a black guy they're blaming jews i mean like look at what's happened with kanye look at what's happening with you know you're seeing all these people that was the other this, thing Chappelle, like, like Google super like yeah. you're seeing like and, and again you're talking about somebody like kanye west Kyrie Irving, these are these are elite. They're obviously in that top 20% of guys that are getting all the ass. They, and they're even being, to some extent, radicalized. I don't think the, they're well. I don't well, think Kanye is well. Well, one, <laughs> I think Kyrie Irving is, is completely well. I think he is a, a very... The difference between Kyrie Irving and somebody like me and Tom is we see the same stuff he sees. We see the flat earth stuff. We see all that kind of stuff. And we are able to sort of turn it into comedic ideas mm. and fun ideas where Kyrie sees it and he just goes, he just goes, I mean, maybe the earth is flat. I mean, he wasn't being serious. He had just seen the information, did a deep dive the way we do. Like, I mean, right. you know, from 10 years ago for me, I was like, 9-11 is a conspiracy. Yeah. I'm not sure we went to the moon. Like, right. like I, and I was like, I'm seeing this evidence and it looks right. fucking, you know, to me, right. like, so... If I was Kanye, or if I was if I was uh, if I was Kyrie, they'd be like that guy's insane. Because right, you know. But you're also you know insane. You're not well. It's not just that you're <laughs> insane. You also have that alarm. You have that white guilt alarm in your head that makes sure that you don't go. It's the Rothschilds, <laughs> like so. That's behind all these conspiracies because you know we've all been socially conditioned to be really careful about any sort of anti-Semitism because it's horrible, and we understand the history behind why. All these horrible things have happened to people. That's you know, weird. Just, I have like, things about that too, where I'm just like, like I, I was working with a, a comedy, comedy. Don't comic go down shit, that rabbit hole, Tom. But he's, he's a Jewish guy in Kentucky, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. And he's like, I have not seen any anti not almost no anti-Semitism, and I live in the South, and I've been Jewish all my life. It's like I just don't. I've never had. I'm, I've never had conversations about maybe one with a dude a long time ago that was like the Jews, but never like literally except that maybe one weirdo that was a white power guy that I ended up somehow in a weird conversation with him. But you've also always functioned mostly in liberal spaces. 
or you were the person holding a microphone in right. front of a crowd of conservatives. Right. So your interactions, like you have, and and again, in our lifetime, the the you know the we live in the South, so there we there's way less interaction between you know us and people that are Jewish because we don't interact with them as much. Right. And so the 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 anti-Semitism wasn't beat into our heads as a kid by the conservatives that we knew, and it wasn't something that people were experiencing. So in the South, it, it's not as big of a thing. But if you go to New York or if you go to Chicago, there's way more anti-Semitism because there's a lot more Jewish people in business. And then you look at, like, Kanye was holding his phone up showing the list of executives for the record label, and the ones in red are the Jewish ones. Like, that's dangerous. Yeah. The level that he has taken it. I agree. And yes, to some extent, I think Kanye West is an unmedicated person with a mental illness. But he's also... I think we all are. I think, I think we all are, to yeah. some extent. And it's... Nobody... Because he's in such a position of power, nobody's able to rein him in. But it's the scary thing is that there are so many people out there that are absorbing these ideas. But here's that the thing. Are, that are buying into them because they just see... it's. It, they see that society's fucked. They see that something insane is happening. They're seeing the discontent. They're seeing the lack of comfort. And they only know to blame somebody of another race. Instead of us all just acknowledging, this is the, you know, Jeff Bezos owns the Washington Post now. Elon Musk owns Twitter now. And it's it's the same problem it's always been. It's the, the richest of the rich trying to manipulate and co control everybody. But with social media and with online stuff, they, they have can. so much, yeah. They can because they're, and it's How's not that even, different from when owning three television, that when there was only three television networks or, or if there's five companies that own every, every network, how is that different than that one a rich guy owning Twitter? Absolutely nothing except here to me, here is, here's the primary difference there. And maybe this is me giving them too much credit, but there were certain journalistic ethics that even now today you see of it has to have multiple sources right. to to be in the paper to be on the six o'clock news even if they're um you know non saying their name sources they still have like there's still some journalistic requirements behind it but with social media they can just a lot of people watch those kevin samuel videos those andrew tate videos they see those they go viral and the algorithm is just designed to churn that to more people because that's what people are reacting to. Right. And so they can even, the people behind YouTube, behind TikTok, behind all that stuff, they can even say, well, we're not directing people to this right wing conspiracy stuff. They we can just like, program the algorithm. Yeah. We're just it. programming the algorithm to play what people are watching and they can hold their hands up like they're innocent when what they're doing is feeding crazy conspiracy theory shit super set like if you watch kevin samuel videos it's wild how he just takes a massive shit on every woman on the play he said he like before he died he was interviewing women and the first thing he would ask him is how tall are you instead of having one rush limbaugh that was kind of pushing people to the right now the entire internet especially like you have a teenage son i have you know teenage sons like the the amount of time I am trying to talk to them to n make sure they don't end up because they don't know any better. Right. They can end up super red pilled just literally by looking at their phone and adopting all this crazy, you know, stuff. And it also changes. It's also television and and phones and internet have yeah. changed. Like I saw you post about AD, have taken the ADHD yeah. test. It's literally changed our brain function to where most people now technically are pro are ADHD right. or ADD right. and it's directly related to how our brain function has changed by how we take in information right you know and it's like where we used to take it in reading or writing now it's now it's on the phone and 30 seconds these are well, rewiring our brains to now we all have... are we all have that now well we went from novels to movies to sitcoms to uh like clip shows yeah. to streaming clips and now it's down to videos like under a minute yeah we're gonna have 30 second news stories and, and like it's just literally are you talking about my sex tapes yes and <laughs> under a minute no yeah <laughs> under a minute on, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 
It's a variation of one of my old jokes. Now, <laughs> now uh, you, you said something a minute ago, the Rothschild thing, right? Like yeah. the Rothschilds are running the world. Like, you know, like to me, when I do, when I, when I many years ago was like the Federal Reserve Bank and the money, that's not anti-Semitic to be like, there's a one group of people that owns the money and controls banking, basically. It's maybe not one group of people, but that doesn't, because I'm, they just happen to be Jew. I don't care that they're Jew. I'm like, that doesn't mean. You literally just said what Kanye said. Okay. That doesn't like, mean. But here's the thing. When, as soon it would be as, dumb for them not to. As soon as you add in the, the statement, they just happen to be, there are a large number of people that her, would hear you say they just happen to be and go, like they went back whistle. to you being like, yeah, they just happen to be well, Tom. I, that's, I would. I know I, that's not even your fault, right? But because there is so much stuff out there that is also saying it's definitely them, and then you add in your voice to the, they just happen to be. That's how people will lump. That's how people lumped in what Chappelle said on SNL. As right. now he's anti-Semitic because it's not that Chappelle is anti-Semitic. It's not even. It's that. When you hear what the far right wingers say, and then what Kanye said, and then what Chappelle said, which is basically kind of identical to what you just said, um, people are just go like when they hear you say it, they just assume, which isn't the case, that that's also what you mean. You're just smart enough not to say. No, I'm it. dumb enough to not right. to not uh, to not figure out a better way to say. Right. It. You know, but I'm saying the dumbest racist in the room. Yeah. I'm, it's, yeah. <laughs> dumb, yeah. <laughs> 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 but you know, I, 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 I don't even, I'm not even, I wouldn't, I'm not even taking, I'm not, in my mind, there's no religion in it. There's no nothing in it. There's just like, there's a, there's a, there's a group of people that there's a group of people that run the oil industry. I don't know right. what their, what their, what their race or religion is. I don't care. Uh, same with, same with money. There's a, and then there's same with who owns the, um, whatever the, the outlets of communication are before it right. was television. Like my era was like, who owns the media? You know, yeah. like those, the Mur like the Murdochs, right. and all it, their newspapers right. and channels. Yeah. And it would be dumb for, it would be, if I, am I, if I'm a super billionaire and I want my v worldview out there it and I want my business to do better, it would be dumb for me to not buy the governments, to buy of the course. social outlets. It would just be stupid. Because it would be bad business because the next guy would and then I wouldn't but be the rich guy. That's the problem with a economic system that allows that's an, why we need an unelected individual to gain that level of power. And look, I am, I am not going, hey, we should go full on socialism either. To be clear, I'm not saying that because the power, there's always going to be someone who steps in and fills the vacuum of power. Always. And in socialist and communist countries, what happened was it was these elected officials that became corrupted. And that is also so too much government is you still end up with fascist control, not enough government. You still end up with fascist control. The difference is in America, the thing that's messing us up. Look, if I lived in communist Soviet Union in like 1978, I would be. It's these government officials because that's who was doing the most damage. Right. So it's not, I'm not selling, we should go full on socialist or we should go full on libertarian. And they're both childish ideas because they both ignore the power vacuum that, that is always filled. Right. Someone always steps in and when given the opportunity to control others are going to do it. And so, ha, but so it's humans that suck. Well, absolutely. Right. But it's also, there's something fundamentally innate about us. We're pack animals. We have to be able to, when there's eight of us and danger happens, if one of us can step up and be the loud voice in the room that organizes everyone so that we can get away, that's evolutionary, powerful, and important. Right. The problem is those same things that allow those seven people to listen to the one in the escape situation is the same thing that is allowing Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos and the Koch brothers and all these other guys to instead of influencing eight people in an emergency situation to influence literally all of society, all of society to go do crazy shit, like getting weirdly racist and anti-Semitic and like going down these crazy rabbit holes. What about these people? Like, like you're saying, like most of those people, they don't feel like they're racist. They're like, I'm not racist. And the, but they, well, but, right? I, well, <laughs> no, 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 I don't but, think that they're, I think they genuinely are like, 
It's, I'm not racist. I, but, I have. I, I love people of every right, but they. Yeah. But somehow they end up in that group, even because their actions and what they vote for. Oh. I have a theory on this too. Okay, I, and I think this is actually true. I knew you would. That's why. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I think the reason that a lot of people who are obviously racist um, have convinced themselves that they're not racist or they're not bigoted or they're not sexist is, as kids, we were raised to believe that what racism was was believing you were superior to other people. Right. Like, uh, I am a member of a group that is superior to that group. And that's even the definition of racism is feeling superior and then also having the power to do something about it. That's why, you know, black people can't, the, the line was black people can't be racist because even if they don't like people, or even if they feel superior to people of other races, they didn't have the power to do anything about it. It's funny because uh, that was, uh, we had this discussion or something about that on, on the Miss Pat show. And yeah. she was like, I can't be racist. I don't have any of the power. I'm like, this is the Miss Pat show. Right. And this is That's, on BET. You yeah. yeah. Have, they, there's you a, actually do have power now. <laughs> it's, you know, it's the same thing with like the, tra like the transgender journalist who's saying, uh, you know, trans women are powerless in America. Like you're writing for the Washington Post. Like you're not powerless. Yes. So it's so, but the, the historic argument was right. that you felt superior and had the ability to use power to influence. Now, I don't think most people who are conservative right wing are sitting around going, I'm better. I think it's a sense of inferiority now okay. that drives racism. I think it is the, the 30 year old white guy who can barely jump up and touch the net and he doesn't know any black people. So he just hates so, black people instead of working on his calves? Well, not just that. He he doesn't feel superior because the only black people he sees are LeBron James, who can jump from the free throw line and dunk, or Neil deGrasse Tyson, who is obviously a thousand times smarter than he is. So most who can't his, dunk, by the way. Right. Well, right. <laughs> but it's not I don't think modern racists are coming from a place of superiority, is my point. And so when they don't when they can say to themselves, I don't think I'm better than them. If anything, I think they're as good or better. And they have all these advantages that the government are giving them. There's no way I can win. I'm guaranteed to lose. Most, I think most racism now is built on this, the white genocide. Like you hear people talk about white genocide. We're I've never heard white numbers. genocide. Yeah, <laughs> not just, well, it's white genocide is like whiteness is obviously a recessive trait in the way that, that the historical racist one drop okay. argument. If you have one drop of not white blood, you're not white anymore. I'm like not that's, white. Right, right, right. I got just enough Lebanese in my blood to right. wash away all my exactly. white Exactly. <laughs> but that's like, that was the, the hardcore racist. That's how slave owners, if a slave owner got one of his slaves pregnant, the kid was still a slave, even though it was, because it was, well, they're partially that. So the historic thing. And so now you've got, oh, don't call me right now. Um, all the historic. That's the first time I've, I've that's happened. That really? Somebody's, somebody's watch has rung. Yeah, I don't know why. So I don't even know how the ringer turned on. Like I'm, t I'm talking about. I'm sitting here being so superior and smart, and I'm too stupid to remember to fucking turn my phone that's, that's off. That's funny, but, dude. But no, uh, but no, it's so now. It's a, it's this white gen, the whole white genocide argument is the idea that white people are going to go extinct because okay, so because what? I don't care. Right? Exactly. Who cares if my grandkids are mixed race? That doesn't matter to me at all. But it, but if you wrap it up in the idea of your cultural identity is that I'm Scottish and I'm like, or that yeah, I don't get that. Yeah. yeah. Get, like my but, wife would be like going back to the ancestor stuff and just digging through her ancestors to go. I want to mark it all the way back to, uh, you know what? I don't, I don't, I don't give a fuck who about my uncle. You don't Jimmy. think you that's I mean? cool? Like, yeah. No, I, I, well, I, cool. I like that I don't stuff. Really, I don't, I, most I, people too. do. I just I, have no connection to it. I just don't, roll it into my like yeah, i like knowing my genetic like i like knowing that i am like 84 percent english like genetically like i i'm like and it cracked me up to find out that i am because my ancestors came from england and went to the mountains of north carolina and inbred with each other for like 300 years like that i'm actually more english than most people currently living in england huh so like which is funny to me and it's a silly thing but it but I don't take that and turn it into like an identity thing that that means this about me where culturally so many people do do that. And like the, the idea of, of white people are going to go extinct. That's not a sense of superiority. It's that's, fear. that's literally fear and recognizing inferior. That's, that's realizing you're a recessive gene. Okay. Like the, your identity 
is recessive amongst humans. So it's, you really those people think they never, know that science? But people are, I mean, they they do though. They do? This is not, comp, everybody, everybody, it's not even the science. It's the, like the, the 53 year old white grandma in West Virginia, right. whose daughter hooked up with the Mexican kid. And now to that lady, she has Mexican grandbabies. Right. And she might love those Mexican grandbabies, but at the same time, she looks at them and goes, oh, they don't look like me though. And so, okay, but that's uh, uh, going back to anti-Semitism and blah, blah, blah. But that, I, th there's no community that I've been around or that my stereotype of has more of a, I, I want you to, like, especially grandparents, I want you to marry a nice Jewish girl. I want you to marry it. You know what I mean? They, there's a, there is. They're a, just ahead of the curve on this because of their, where white people in America are envisioning this massive oppression that they're experiencing. Jewish people actually experienced a Holocaust. Yes, that's true. So the idea that they came out of that, and it's not, and everybody in the world pre nineteen twenty already had the stick with your own mindset. That was throughout human history. So this the, is just I, in the last hundred years that we've we've even gotten out of stick with your kind. Yeah, and then so as like liberalism has has evolved into Western society over the last hundred years, white people had sort of moved past that. And a lot of black people were moving past that. And I mean, it was the 1960s before you could even legally marry someone outside of your race. That's true. And when Mormonism, it wasn't until they needed a running back. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it really was. But so. that's like, think of like, think about how new the idea of diversity as a good thing is. Yeah. I've never and thought about that. The idea that people are are circling back and doubling down on those ideas now because of the way, especially social media is pushing these ideas. I, it's a scary, scary, I like, I haven't, how, do you, how you don't think social media is all, is expanding the way people are like, Oh, there's all these different ideas. You think it's, you think it's honing people into single, these single ideas, or do you think, do you think people are being like, Oh, there's a lot of ideas, but that's not the way the algorithms push information at you. If, you react and watch all of a Kevin Samuel video, you don't then get a video from someone explaining to you an opposing view to Kevin Samuel. You don't get a rebuttal. Yeah. Okay. You get another Kevin Samuel video or you get an Andrew Tate video. So oh, with all the information, so why don't somebody not, should design a site that does that? Like they did like and no one used and it. Really? Yeah, that's the whole point. The reason our brain chemistry leads us down rabbit holes. You and I are worse about this than almost any human on the planet. When we get obsessed with an idea, yeah. you and I go crazy deep on it. Yeah. Crazy deep. That's how we can write jokes about it. That's how we can be informed people. And the difference, though, is we have curated our own obsessions throughout our lives because we got fascinated by something and we went deeper and we went deeper and we went deeper. But we also had the control to stop it. But with like a teenage teenager right now or even a 50-year-old right now, someone who grew up with, didn't even use a computer when in their 60, these old, these old, they don't understand how manipulated they're being. You and we, that we guy's don't. Walter Cronkite. Well, he's on yeah. here. He must be Walter yeah, Cronkite. Yeah, yeah. So then you're supposed and, to trust again, him. Like they, somebody like a, a 17 year old boy sees an Andrew Tate video. This has 300 million views. It must mean something. Yeah. Right. So Andrew Tate is kind of the new Walter Cronkite yeah. to like, and there's, but they're not getting I'd that view from rather. anywhere else. Should they're just getting it from there. Like they're well, they are now. But there was like there wasn't like that view. There was just the other view of like of like that's what makes him stand out. Is like oh, that's a different way of looking at this, and wait, that makes sense. Like it's almost like like if you read Ted Kaczynski's thing or whatever, right. or or even you watch that no, old Ted Kaczynski or, or, made some good yes. points. It's, yes. He's also so did Charles Manson. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean. Yeah. Like, I mean <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. It's so did Rush Limbaugh made some good points, but also took those good points and turned them into horrible outcomes. It's, it's, if someone was videotaping someone literally just standing there talking about stars connect to blue to brown, and this is the way chickens work, that video might go viral, <laughs> but it wouldn't lead to people. That it, I mean, maybe you'll see another video about a schizophrenic person staring at the sky. But it's not going to lead, but with ideas, specific, coherent ideas that you can find a nugget of truth in the opening, 
leads to farther down and farther down. There's a reason people get to Alec Jones, Alex Jones. Nobody, the first time they turn on a computer, go, yeah. Alex Jones. The first time I heard Alex Jones, like maybe 15 years ago, I was like, this guy gets it. I know, because <laughs> you're, you're so, a, and then it took you time to back out of it, though. Yes. Because you were like, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. Because that stuff, it's addictive, though. You <laughs> hear. By the way, that's what they'll do. They'll edit the, all of the course. other yeah. out. They'll be yeah, like, yeah. just going, Alex Jones gets it. And that'll be a video they put up. <laughs> they're turning and the frogs, look at, guys. Yeah, look bad. because they're trying to turn what you're doing into viral content so that you and yeah. they can turn this business into that content machine right. so that it becomes profitable so that, you know, everybody here can drive a Bugatti, you know, and it's like, that's the weird thing. Like we're doing this and we're having a great conversation, but really we're if, just listening to you talk, but well, that's true too. <laughs> but if, if we turn we, right now, if you say some super sexist stuff though, it'll go viral. Yeah. Your clip will be what gets big yes. and y'all are going to triple your followers. You know what I love about uh, Judaism, by the way? What, cause I'm a, first of all, like I'm an anti anti semite, but like the, 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 it's the core, one well, not core, but like the Torah and those, they are, they are the Talmud is really it. It's, it's a constant questioning, right? Like of their, of their own beliefs which and is their science own belief too. system, yeah. right? Which m most people are afraid to question their own beliefs. That's what, to me, that's what's making it harder and harder to communicate because people won't turn the questioning on themselves. Right. But that, sort of like from the bottom up. Like if I run a business and I'm the CEO and I come in and blah, 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 like in America, everybody shuts up and listens. And in the, in the, in the state of Israel or whatever, in those companies, it's, it's so much a part of culture that the guy that works in the mail thing will be like, nah, that's a bad idea. I think we should try it this way. So, and they're not, they're not fired for that. Like it's encouraged, like right. all this it, through the religion, through everything. It's, there's this constant sort of rebirth of ideas because they take in as many ideas as they can. Yeah. <laughs> we just start at one point and then we end right now. That's fair. So good having you on. Is that, Is that it? We done? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you don't have we, to end the show and you yeah. all look at yeah, me. Yeah, I, I don't know what we do. Yeah. So we're gonna keep... are, are we finished, Daddy? Yeah. Are, we, are we finished? <laughs> we just kind of talk.